Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Dave. And um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time zone, to all of you. What I want to cover in our short lecture today is in response to popular demand. We're going back to basics once again. And I want to cover some of the database fundamentals that I find are sometimes skipped over when people first study Oracle. Uh, of course, if you study Oracle with us, we don't skip over anything. Now, it's possible that for some of you this material, because it is a bit of a back to basics, is largely revision. But I hope that nonetheless you will all get something out of it. I have found from years consulting in the field and a fair bit of time in the classroom that many DBAs, perfectly competent DBAs, you know, fully competent production DBAs, have perhaps never fully investigated what actually happens in memory and on disk when you execute DML. So what I intend to do is run through, firstly, the requirements of a relational database management system as regards data corruption. You know, basically, that's what we call the ACID test, and it's quite simply that a relational database is not allowed to corrupt any data under any circumstances. And we'll explain what's going on, and of course demonstrate as well, how Oracle has actually implemented this. Now, understanding this mechanism is crucial for any DBA. But in particular, I want to present it in a manner that perhaps will help you explain it to others. Why? So that you can motivate the investment in Oracle technology that your organization needs. Now, Oracle is expensive. OK, I'm in love with the technology, no question about that. But we can't deny that it is not cheap. And I find that I often need to explain to users why it's essential, why, you know, what they're getting for their money. And there is, above all, this one reason. In a properly configured database, it is absolutely impossible to lose or corrupt data, provided the database is properly configured and managed. And what I want to run through today, well, I'll, I'll prove you know, what is going on in the background to implement this and prove that the recovery mechanism in the event of any corruption is simply unavoidable. 